one with us. Uh, last season, you started 11 games for Washington. Did did it just come together with you last year? And and uh, what was it like to be a regular starter for the first time? Uh, you know, it, it was a blessing just to be able to get the snaps, um, you know, see things I've been seeing for a while and get out there to help out the team. Um, and just taking advantage of opportunity, you know, you don't in this league, you don't know when the opportunity is going to come. So you just got to do your best when they show up to take advantage of them and uh, did the did the best of my ability to do that last year. Aaron Wilson. Hey, Kevin, how you doing? How's it going? Kevin, um, one thing that the four three defense, especially at the linebacker position uh, demands is speed. I actually feel like your athleticism just really fits well with what Lovey Smith wants to do, especially at linebacker. Can you repeat that? You said, uh, how much do you feel like your athleticism and speed really fits the 4-3 and kind of what Lovey Smith wants his linebackers to be about? Yeah, I think we all, you know, each of the linebackers that are in the group fit that scheme of just being fast, running to the ball. Uh, guys, that's going to give 110% effort. Um, and, you know, like I said, myself included, I pride myself on hustle. I'm not the, the biggest guy, but I, I can run to the ball, I can hit. Um, and all those attributes are going to help this team as we figure everything out going forward. Thank you. Mark Berman. Hey there, what do you think about playing for Lovey Smith? It's a, it's a blessing. Um, I actually, the first time I met him was uh, one of my visits uh, coming out in 2014. And just, uh, you know, guy that has somewhat sort of like a, a aura around him. You know, he's he just you just trust him right away. So once you, once you meet him, um, just a, a regular. You don't really view him as a coach, just you know, somewhat of a mentor, or a, a person to look up to, and a person to really think of and and listen to. Um, so the fact that I get the opportunity to play under him is is something I won't take for granted for sure. John. Kevin, you're coming to a team and specifically a defense with a lot of changes because of a new coach, new GM, new defensive coordinator. When you have so many new faces out there, how long, what does that do? Does it help the competition? And what about the learning period that you guys have to do considering how many of you are new? Uh, it definitely creates a sense of urgency, um, which you know every team should have. But now it's, it's right in front of your face because you realize you can't uh, walk into OTAs as comfortable as you were the year before because everything is new. Everything is different. And like you said, with that level of, of uh, competition that's across all positions, it, it makes you really uh, take advantage of your time while you're here and, and really be a true professional. I feel as though this offseason, this camp is going to test a lot of us and a lot of us are going to be ready for, for that um, challenge. And it's going to be a blessing to be a part of and to watch. It's going to, it's going to be an active camp for sure. Aaron Wilson. Hey, Kevin. Um, you described your style of play and how, how it fits the 4-3. When you think about everyone and the chemistry that you guys will try to form, what's that like now just in the early moments? And I, I imagine that most of you guys know each other, but just introducing each yourselves to each other and trying to build some camaraderie because, like you said, there is so many new guys. Yes. Yeah, um, one thing I think that's helped is uh, a lot of, especially the new guys, have a couple years in already. So um, a lot of us understand what it takes to, you know, go through an NFL season, um, really, you know, lock in on the playbook, trying to, you know, communicate, talk about certain things. You know, it's not as though it's a coach is telling us things. It's, it's an exchange of information that's going on right now, which I think is very helpful. You have certain guys that are used to playing a defense a certain way, and we'll talk to each other like, hey, this is how we're going to do it over here. And, oh, that's how you communicate there. That's how we communicate it too. Like, let's talk like that. So, you know, there's a lot of positives with, uh, you know, a lot of the new guys are here. But, you know, there's, there's still a learning curve, but we're getting everything figured out for sure. Just one quick follow up. Uh, when you were making your free agent decision, what did it come down to? Obviously, uh, you signed a two year contract. Not everyone did that. Some guys signed one year deals. Uh, what was it about the Texans and what Nick Casario and David Culley were talking about that made you feel like you wanted to sign a, a longer deal and be, a, be here for a little while? 
uh, it was clear to me that they were trying to start something new uh, and, and head in, in a clear direction. You know, every team is preparing for the Super Bowl. Um, but, you know, being able to do, have the opportunity to be a part of something uh, going forward was something that attracted me to this place. Um, and yeah, that, that was pretty much it. Just the, the attraction and the, and the competition level uh, truly testing myself and seeing where I could be. Cody Davis. Hey, Kevin, for you personally, how has the first couple of days of training camp, what mini training camp has been with the Texans? And have you had an opportunity to work with some of the younger guys on the defensive side of the ball, like Ross Blacklock and Jonathan Grenard? And if so, what are your first impressions of those guys? Uh, everybody here is, is coming ready to work. That's clear to me. Um, I'll say the first couple weeks being here, especially being from up north, that, that humidity definitely hits you a little bit differently. Uh, so that I'll say that was just the curve right there. But, you know, everybody's coming here ready to work. So it makes it easier to wake up in the morning knowing that the environment is, is trying to produce success. So I myself have to make sure that I'm locked in, that I'm ready if it's getting up a little bit earlier to get some breakfast body work, do whatever to prepare, because I know that across the board, there's going to be a lot of guys preparing to, to earn some spots. Last one for John. Kevin, uh, Zach Cunningham seems to be one of the few players under the new regime that would have a starting job locked up. What have been your impressions of Zach? Um, you know, he's, he's a guy that I've watched a lot of film on. Um, I pers I don't know him personally as of yet, but I mean, the dude is talented. He can make plays, you know, the proof is in the film. Um, so it's, it's exciting to, you know, to have the opportunity to potentially play next to a, a individual like that. And, you know, he's going to bring what he's been bringing for the past couple of years. So there's no doubt in my mind that, you know, everything's going to go well with him and, you know, he's in a position that he's in for a reason. Thanks, Kevin. All right. Thank you. Hey, Justin, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Good, good. Justin, what's it like for you to get back, you know, even though this isn't uh, a hitting time or, you know, this is kind of a get your feet wet time right now, just to be back on a football field after being out and having to come back and work your knee back to where it is now? Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's definitely a blessing. Um, last year was the longest um, probably year of my life, but the most enjoyable at the same time. Um, I miss football like crazy, uh, but I had time to take care of my body, let my body fully heal, um, give my knee the attention it needed. Um, I've been through an ACL tear before, so I knew how to approach it. Um, this time I had time. Um, and I had a, had my third child, my daughter, uh, during COVID in August. So I got to be there for that. And, and really experience having a newborn because um, in this football world, you don't really have that time. So um, it was a blessing, but definitely towards December, January, when, you know, things started heating up, I'm sitting at home, you know, itching for it. Um, and so as soon as I started getting calls, I was happy, excited. Um, but it's definitely nice to be back out here. And, and like I said, getting my feet wet and, and getting my body back in tune with it and, and just getting back at it. Aaron Reese. Hey, Justin, you, you played all over the line in your career. Where do you expect to play on this team? Where did the Texans talk to you about fitting in kind of when you were talking to them in the negotiation process? Um, I'm going to play center. John McClain. Uh, Justin, when you yes, have so many new players and a new, and a new offensive line coach, um, how long is that going to take you guys to mesh and how eager are you to get to training camp when everything gets really serious? And also what's your impressions 
of James Campen so far? Um, well, let's start with that. I think I think Camp, as he would say, call him Camp. Um, he, he's a really cool coach, and you know I love that that he played center and and he played center for a pretty good quarterback um, back in Green Bay. So um, he has a lot of knowledge. I think him having Robert Kugler uh, in the room too um, is awesome. And, and that's part of the reason why I signed here was camp was the O-line coach. And, and my first conversation with them, it just, it felt promising. Um, and it kind of seemed like we were both on the same page. And, um, you know, um, whenever I got cut from Seattle, um, you know, it hurt. It definitely hurt. I saw it coming. I knew it was coming, um, but I, it, I mean, it hurt. It, it, the hardest part was feeling unwanted after giving so much time and, and effort and giving my ACL to them, feeling unwanted. Um, and so to get a call and come down here to Houston where maybe at first I didn't initially intend to sign um, right then, but coming here and visiting with the coaching staff, uh, camping, um, Kelly, uh, you know, Coach Coley, um, seeing Nick and, and, and Jack, um, just just seeing what they were about and, and what they were trying to do this year and, and the pieces they were bringing in, um, you know, kind of like KPL just said, you know, we, we, me and him, we were in Seattle together, so we know what it feels like. And, and you know, we both felt the energy here and, and the vibe. So um, it was an easy call. Um, you know, I wanted to sign the papers before I left town. So, um, but to answer your question, I got off topic. To answer your question, um, I, I think we're already gelling up front. Um, I think there's great leadership in the room, you know, with myself, Marcus Cannon, Lane Taylor. Um, you know, Max Sharping is as bright as they get here um, with his knowledge in the offense. Um, you know, LT, Titus, you go on and on. Cole Toner, um, you could literally go on and on. Everyone in the room is sharp. The two rookies they brought in are sharp and, and, and technically sound. So um, this is going to be a fun room. It's going to be a competitive room, a smart room, um, one that can and will do what it can to lead this team to victory. So um, we understand that it starts up front, and and we understand that um, we are the heartbeat of the offense, and and we take that pride. Um, you know, I. <laughs> I just, I told, told my friend this, I said, uh, you know, I'm getting up at five, five thirty every morning, willingly, happily, sometimes before my alarm. And that wasn't always the case in my career. I'm just, uh, excited. The newness of it, um, being out for a year. So I know what it's like not to have it. I'm hungry. And, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play my ass off this year. Mark Berman. Just is it since all you've known in Seattle is you weird being someplace else, or because of what you've been through at the end of the tail end of this, your time there, that's not that's kind of a moot point now. I'm sorry. I said because you've only known Seattle in the NFL is it weird being someplace else, or because of how it ended there, that's kind of a moot point now. Um. Well, I mean, so I felt leaving Seattle, I felt unwanted, but. Like they were good to me and I enjoyed my time there and the friendships I made and playing with Russ was, you know, you know, uh, I'm forever grateful for that. But um, coming here, it was it was a little weird um, pulling up to the stadium rather than a facility. But um, that that's the exciting part. You pull it to the stadium. You're like, this is where I work. I mean, it's it's incredible. So um, it took maybe a couple of weeks to get used to things. But uh, I think everyone in the building does a really good job of making people feel like they've been here. I mean, we, the Texans added 30 something people this off season. Right. So um, I think everyone kind of had that approach and, and they were ready to make the transition for everyone easier. And I think that even the players that have been here have done that too. So um, I think the, the biggest transition was just trying to find housing out here and, and get situated there. This was the easy part coming to work. What are you trying to, to bring these guys Justin? one more time what are you trying to bring what are you trying to bring this team justin um a winning culture not that they didn't have one but i mean you look at the record it speaks for itself and so i mean there's a reason they brought me here i'm going to bring attitude aggressiveness um you know i'm going to 
play smart at the same time, but, um, you know, I, I, I just want to play football and I know how, and I can make sure we're on the same page. Um, you know, I understand my job as center. I understand the job that the right tackle has and the left tackle. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just ready to get going. I'm just, um, ready to get out there and compete and, and show them and get the ball running. I want to run the ball. Seth Payne. Seth. Hey, Justin, uh, did, did you have doubts about whether you're going to be able to come back from your knee surgery? Was it more complicated than perhaps you thought it was at first? Um, not at all. Um, my, my knee in college, I tore my ACL and had a pretty bad meniscus stare. This time around, it was just a isolated ACL. Um, and so, I mean, as soon as it tore, um, I didn't hit depression. I was like, all right, let's do this. You know, I knew I was going to go to one of the best doctors with Andrews and I was going to get it right. Um, but I mean, in the back of my mind, I was hopeful that I would still have a job last year. Um, but as soon as they cut me, you know, it's kind of like, all right, screw you. I'm going to get right. And so I took that approach every day, rehabbed every day, um, rehabbed out of my garage during the first part of the pandemic. So, um, no, I, I feel like I had the right approach and I knew how to attack it. And, you know, it's, it's just, I've been there, done that. So there's nothing new to me for sure. If I, if I could ask one more, uh, yep. what, what clicked for you when they moved you to center in Seattle? Was there, was there something about that position that felt different than tackle or guard? Um, I'm not sure. My my first pass set, whenever they moved me to center, didn't go that well. Um, and I think the fact that it didn't go well um, made me want to figure it out. Um, but I don't know. It, it just kind of came to me. Um, I, the snaps were easy. I mean, I already knew the offense. The hardest part was just trying to figure out how to communicate to everyone. And so um, once I figured that out, um, it kind of was just easy. I feel like, I feel like I was, uh, you know, trying to find my home whenever that was my home all along. We'll take these last three, Adam Wexler. Hey, Justin, you kind of explained your reasoning behind wanting to sign here in Houston when you made that decision in early March. Uh, did the possibility of, of playing with Deshaun Watson weigh into that at all, or even the possibility of, of not playing with him? Did that weigh into your decision at all? Um, what weighed into my decision was what was best for my family, um, best for me and my career. And, um, when I got here, they, they showed that they wanted me here. It wasn't just a, you know, a piece on the puzzle. Like we just need you to finish the puzzle. They were like, we need you to come here and we want you to, you know, do what you do and, and let that spread throughout the offensive line. So, um, you know, the, the, the quarterback hadn't, you know, didn't really make an impact in me. Um, you know, control what you can control. And uh, it was just, it was nice to be wanted and to this degree. And um, I'm going to give them the same respect they gave me. Brandon. Hey, hey, Justin, just a moment ago, you stressed that you really want to run the ball. And I'm sure you're aware that the Texans didn't run the ball well last year. Um, how much has that been addressed with with you as far as you know when you were when you were negotiating and wanting to sign and and then uh, along with your teammates and and have y'all addressed what it would take for you guys to to be able to to be better at that issue? Um, I think. Well, that's cool. That's like two questions. Um, okay, so whenever I was going to sign, um, you know, like I said, Camp and I talked and, and we were just kind of on the same mission. Um, we wanted to come in and start up front and set the tone with the run game and build off that with the pass game. Um, you know, I did know that they led the league, right, in passing yards last year um, or something. But, uh, you know, you can pass all you want. But, um, you know, a really good pass game comes with the run game. So, um, you know, up in Seattle, we ran the ball. And, uh, you know, Russ did his thing. So, um, you can have a little of both. And I think the guys we have up front, um, you know, are all kind of tough, mean guys, and they want to run the ball and be aggressive, you know, as big guys do. And you bring in guys like 
Mark Ingram, Philip Lindsley. Um, you got uh, DJ who's still here. Um, so, so you got people who can do it and you just got to put it all together. And it doesn't matter what happened last year. Um, this is a whole new team. They got 30 new guys. So um, it's what are you going to do now? And we're, we're hungry and ready to go out there and see what we can do. Last one for Aaron. Hey, Justin, you mentioned the mentality you take to football. How much did your wrestling background build some of that, not just the technique, but the attitude that you have to have to, uh, to be able to do what you do against these big nose tackles and defensive linemen that you have to face every week? Yeah, I love getting asked this question. I love, um, you know, letting the youth, you know, in middle school and high school hear it. Um, if you play O-line, go wrestle. And if you don't want to put on the tights, then go play basketball. Um, I think for me, wrestling, um, not only, you know, obviously physically competing, but you're mentally competing with not them, but yourself. Like it's not a team sport. And so all eyes are on you. Are you gonna are you gonna get pinned or are you gonna pin them? You're gonna win or lose. There's there's no there's no draw. Um at least not in my eyes. So you take that approach to football and you got a whole team of people that are competitive within themselves, but they can bring it to a team atmosphere that's dangerous. And so um yeah, I think wrestling, I'm very grateful for it. Um I miss it all the time because I think it it trained my mind to be competitive and to block out the outside noise and just focus on the, the task at hand. And then, uh, I mean, you can sit here and say wrestling helps with leverage and hand placement and all this grappling stuff, which it does. But the biggest takeaway for me was mentally what it did to me. Thanks, Justin. Yeah. Thank you guys.